Hi guys, my name is Prateek and in this video, we're going to talk about the things that you need to know if you intend to trade futures. So the first thing we'll talk about is open interest. So let's suppose there are two players in our example. One person wants to go long and another person wants to go short. They place these orders to create one single contract. So person A buys one lot of futures and person B sells one lot of the same futures contract, creating one new contract. Now let's suppose a third person comes, person C comes and they do a transaction they do a transaction with person B and this person say wants to buy and person B wants to sell, creating another contract over here. So in this case, the OI is two because there are two contracts in existence and the volume is also two because two transactions have taken place. Now, if you're noticing at every transaction, the OI and volume is exactly the same. So what's the difference? Let me close one position to illustrate. So if person A decides to close his long position with person B and exits, another transaction is taken place. So he exits. This is now another transaction. So volume is now three, but the OI is now only one because that contract is not in existence anymore. It was exited, but only one contract exists. So OI is one. So basically, every time you make a trade in futures, the OI is increasing or decreasing. If more people are creating more positions, then OI increases and that's called an OI buildup. If many people decrease positions by exiting their positions, then that's an OI decrease, also called unwinding of positions. Another thing to note is that OI carry forwards up to the next day all the way until the contracts actually expire. This number can increase or decrease based on how many people are creating or exiting contracts. Volume, on the other hand, starts at zero at the start of the day. And as transactions progress, it keeps counting upwards. It can't decrease, obviously, because once a transaction has happened, it's happened. And then when a new day begins, again, it starts from zero and counting upwards. That's the main difference between OI and volume. Now, the number of contracts that can exist in the system can't be unlimited, right? So there is a limit to how many contracts that can exist in any security. And this number, once it hits 95% of that limit, called 95% of the market-wide position limit, the exchange doesn't allow you to create any new positions, which means if that 95% limit is hit, you can't create any fresh short or long positions in that time. This is called the contract ban period, where no new fresh positions can be created, but existing players can exit positions. And after some time, once the ban period has been removed, new positions are allowed again. A good practice for you is to actually go to the Zerodha margin calculator page. And here you can see securities under ban. Today we can see escorts, XI, National Aluminium, etc. under that ban period. So far in this video, we've talked about open interest and the contract ban period. Now we'll talk about circuits. Circuits are price bans set by the exchange to prevent a stock from making large price movements in a single day. Now these price bans could be two to 20% depending on the liquidity of the stock. But the point is, if any FNO stock hits a 10% movement for a single day, the exchange will halt trading for that security for 15 minutes. This is called the cooling off period and people get some time to think about what to do next. But the next price range is 5%. That's the next circuit. So if the stock hits another 5% movement for the day, there'll be another 15 minutes pause before trading is resumed again in that FNO stock. These price bands where trading halts momentarily and then resumes are called circuits or the dynamic price range. So let's see an example over here on Kite. On the left, I open the market depth here to show the information. Now below the bids and offers, we can see some information. Here you will find the lower circuit and the upper circuit. This is the price band for today. So if we would hit the lower circuit or the upper circuit, Infosys would stop for 15 minutes for trade. And then again, a new circuit limit would be created. That's 5% away from that number. And trading would resume after 15 minutes of halt. Key takeaways from this video are, 